Okay, so I hope you guys can hear me with the mic and the wind blowing here and it's starting to sprinkle, but I wanted to get this done because I want to give you guys the 100% truth here. Now, I'm not going to be shooting these guns in this video due to the fact that I've already shot them. I've had the Umarex Gauntlet 1 since 2017. And I just got the Gauntlet 2 within a week ago. And I've already found some things out about it that I do not like. And it's just an unfinished gun. And I really want to go over that with you real quick before I compare them both. Now, with that said... The Gen 2, as mentioned in the review video, is set up for a heavier, longer projectile. Now, with that also said, there has been discrepancies in the rifling twist. People want to take somebody's word as the gospel and claim that both of these guns have the same barrel twist. And that is untrue. And matter of fact, I've done some more research and the rifling in each of these barrels is reversed. So the Gauntlet 2 not only has thicker lands, it is also a faster twist. Now also to add on to that, they did not finish this gun properly. And what I mean by that, as an engineer myself, a mechanical design engineer, I know better. The Gauntlet 1, they finished flawlessly. All Everything that people wanted to do was just get more shots and turn the power up, which is fine. I'm 100% okay with that. But with the Gauntlet 2, they increased the power and increased the regulator pressure. But whoever the vendor is for the barrel, or they purposely made it like this, I don't know exactly why. But the problem is, the breech is not reamed properly. It is short, very short and the transfer port hole protrudes in the rifling. Like, this is unacceptable. And I don't know exactly what their angle was or why you have to send it to have somebody finish it, but it's not right. It's almost as if it was set up as a trap. And I have valid proof of this. I've taken pictures of both of these barrels. I've even swapped the barrels on these guns because I've been getting a lot of feedback on the Gauntlet 2 video saying that the velocity was too much. It wasn't the velocity. The pellets going in this barrel were already crooked to begin with, or I should say the rifling was already impaired on the pellet and too much for it on the shorter, lesser grain pellets like the Crossman Premier pellets and the 1589, especially at 25 meters. I have valid proof of this. When you close the bolt probe, on this gauntlet too, the shorter pellets should not be engaging in the rifling, period. Everybody should know that. I mean, even barrel manufacturers put a throat or a lead in their barrel before it even touches rifling, guys. I mean, come on, they did it in the gauntlet Gen 1. You gotta be kidding me. So anyway, now with that said, here we go. Now, what do you get? Well, obviously you get a bigger bottle with the Gen 2 24 cubic inch compared to the Gauntlet Gen 1, which is a 13 cubic inch. The Gen 1 has a 3000 PSI fill pressure. The Gen 2 has a 4500 PSI fill pressure. Again, the barrel twist on the Gen 2 is way faster, has a bigger transfer port hole for more volume of air. The Gauntlet Gen 1 has a smaller transfer port hole and is not protruding in the rifling and has a lead or the chamber is reamed better the breech for the pellet not to be touching the rifling when you put the pellet in by the bolt probe whereas the gauntlet gen 2 you have to close the bolt probe down on the pellet to get it in the rifling it should not be touching the rifling period even the shorter pellets the triggers are identical here. They're very adjustable. I did not adjust the trigger out of the box on the Gen 2 because I wanted to be a legit out of the box review for you guys. You can see obviously the stocks are different. You have an adjustment wheel on the Gen 1. The Gen 2 does not have that. The Gen 2 came with a Picatinny and dovetail rail system, but underneath that I took those rails off because it was just too top heavy and uncomfortable for me to shoot. The Gen 1 was perfect. It, as you could see, it has the dovetail rail system, and it was fine. It was perfect. Now, another issue that I ran into with the Gen 2 was that people were saying that the barrel was misaligned, and that is not true. The barrel actually came loose on me because of me 
closing the bolt or jamming basically the pellet into the rifling because there's no jump so I'm not really happy about that I don't understand as an engineer myself why you would do that why you'd leave it unfinished that makes no sense to me that's why I have some significant thoughts as to why they did it a certain way and have somebody else finish it that makes no sense on the gen 1 in the barrel shroud they come with the cigar style baffle on the gen 2 they came with individual baffles four of them the gen 2 barrel is just a quarter inch longer than the gen 1 they both weigh the same and you can see they got rid of the flimsy barrel shroud thing here like this one's kind of flimsy they got rid of that stud sticking out here for sling or whatever you want to do and they changed it over to m-lock you still have the degassing holes to degas your pressure the gen 2 has the knurled bolt handle the G1 has the round ball handle. No big significant difference there. They both cock the gun. They both shoot. Uh, the bolt handle out of the Gen 2 is superiorly rough compared to the Gen 1 out of the box. I do remember that. But other than that, the guns would be great if they both were equal in their own right instead of having this barrel with a shorter jump or no jump and you have to cram the pellet or slug or whatever you're using into the rifling whereas this barrel in the gen 1 you do not so you're probably thinking well, what about accuracy now and I'm not going to be shooting anything in this video due to the fact that again I've already shot and you know at 50 yards which with the crops up right now in my backyard I'm unable to take it any farther but with these pellets specifically in these guns I was able to achieve sub MOA or sub of angle. So at 50 yards, a half inch is MOA. I'm able to achieve about quarter inch groups, five shots each. So as I mentioned guys, in the review of the Gen 2, I would really, really think hard about getting this gun when there are so many better options out there. Now, as you notice with the Gen 1, this Gen 1, one of the very first iterations, does not have the barrel band as this Gen 2 does. But that really does not mean any significance now if the barrels are not equal, the projectiles get jammed into the land and rifling in the Gen 2, you know, all that's thrown out the window. Even the velocity, all that. If the pellet is jammed into the rifling and the rifling is not correct, it's going to be unstable before the gun is even shot to begin with. Whereas the Gen 1 at least gives it a chance to jump to the rifling. As you can see, this has been a long-winded video and a lot to say and a lot to show you because of just the little research that I've done. And that's what I advise everybody to do. Don't take just somebody's word for it, especially mine. Go double-check with Umarex or whoever the gun manufacturer is to verify. Get a copy of the email. Get a phone call recorded. Whatever you have to do to verify. And again, I cannot stress this enough to find out for your own information that way you know because there's a lot of things that new shooters don't understand or don't know or and some people that just been shooting don't understand fully what is happening here like for instance with the gen 2 you need a higher pressure valve more hammer spring tension and a bigger transfer port to push more volume of air versus the Gen 1, which you don't need that much because it only shoots around 850, 860 feet per second with the 14 grain pellet. And to get more higher velocity, you need more pressure and more volume. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little comparison. I know it wasn't the best, but, you know, I just wanted to get the truth out there comparing these two. As always, I hope you fully understand where I'm coming from. I really like the Gen 1 but the gen 2 was just not that great to me it was especially with the better options out there that are side lever it doesn't make any sense why would why they even come out with the gun that has a bolt still on it when there's so many better options out there even from umarex themselves so it sounds like to me like i said earlier it's a trap it's a setup for some odd reason which i still haven't gotten all the way down to the bottom of it but i will and it's not going to be fun for whoever i find out so 
Anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hope to see you on the next one.